Japan's Deputy Prime Minister Taro Aso said if China invades Taiwan, Tokyo may regard the move as a threat to Japan's survival, and Japan will deploy the self defense forces to exercise collective self defense with the U.S. 130 countries and jurisdictions have joined a new two pillar plan to reform international taxation rules and ensure that multinational enterprises pay a fair share of tax wherever they operate. OECD said the global minimum corporate income tax rate is at least 15%. The global death toll from the coronavirus had reached 4 million. The World Health Organization warns countries ready to ease pandemic restrictions to be extremely cautious because variants are currently winning the race against vaccines, which also threatens the global economic recovery. Hello, everyone. I'm Wade Lee. Thanks for watching Funday News. Here are some top stories from this week. Taiwan's independent democracy has been the headline of the week. With the latest development of Japan extending its commitment to help defend Taiwan regarding China's threats of invasion. According to media report, Japan's Deputy Prime Minister Taro Aso said on July 5th in Tokyo that if China invades Taiwan, Tokyo may regard the move as a threat to Japan's survival and deploy the self defense forces to exercise collective self defense. Japan and the US must defend Taiwan together. Under the Constitution, the Japanese government is authorized to mobilize its self defense force only for national defense. However, in 2015, Japan adopted a new concept involving situations that may threaten Japan's survival. In a newspaper titled Japan's Potential Contribution in an East China Sea Contingency, Rand called political scientist Jeffrey Hornan said this new concept means Japan does not have to be directly attacked to take action. For example, since the United States is responsible for defending Japan under Article 5 of the Security Treaty, if the United States is attacked, this could affect Japan's survival and thus can be defined as such. And, in turn, this enables Japan to use force as the exercise of collective self defense. The terminology collective self defense, using Taro Aso's speech, has its legal rationales. In the US currently, collective self defense appears in the standing rule of engagement, which applies to the US forces and may be thought of as an extension for the use of US military force against combatants who pose no direct threat to the US itself. US Navy Rear Admiral Mike Studeman, who is in charge of intelligence for the Pentagon's Indo Pacific Command, said on July 6 that the potential Chinese attack on Taiwan could target other nations as well. The Deputy Prime Minister of Japan, Taro Aso, said Japan needs to consider that Okinawa could be next if a major problem took place in Taiwan. And the Biden administration on July 11th warned China that any attack on the Philippines in the Flashpoint region would draw a U.S. response under a mutual defense treaty. China has maritime claims around the Spartley Islands and the neighboring reefs and shoals. On to some business news. Amid the ongoing post COVID economic recovery, more than 130 countries have agreed to reform international tax with an universal global corporate income tax rate of 15%. OECD said the framework updates key elements of century old international tax system, which is no longer fit for purpose in a globalized and digitalized 21st century economy. OECD indicates that after years of intense work and negotiations, 130 countries and jurisdictions, representing more than 90% of global GDP, agree jointly to establish a new framework for international tax reform. The new two pillar plan to reform international taxation rules aims to ensure that large multinational enterprises pay tax where they operate and earn profits. OECD said the two pillar package will provide much needed support to governments needing to raise necessary revenues to repair their budgets and their balance sheets, while investing in essential public services, infrastructure, and the necessary measures to help optimize the strength and the quality of the post COVID recovery. Under Pillar 1, taxing rights on more than $100 billion US dollars of profit are expected to be reallocated to market jurisdictions each year. 
the global minimum corporate income tax under Pillar 2, with a minimum rate of at least 15%, is estimated to generate around 150 billion US dollars in additional global tax revenues annually. Additional benefits will also arise from the stabilization of the international tax system and the increased tax certainty for taxpayers and tax administrations. While global business prospects are looking up, the state of the pandemic worldwide is still a mix. As London is expected to lift most COVID guidelines and legal restrictions in England from July 19th, Taipei has gone under a micro-easing of pandemic restrictions as of July 13th. WHO warns countries that are releasing these new pandemic guidelines to be extremely cautious as some of Asian countries are still facing a new wave of variant threats and lockdowns. The changes in England include no limits on how many people can meet, face coverings no longer required by law, nightclubs can open, pubs and restaurants no longer table service only, no limits on guests at weddings and funerals, no limits on people attending concerts, theaters or sports events, adults fully vaccinated in the UK will no longer have to quarantine for 10 days after returning from Amber List countries. Taiwan's Central Epidemic Command Center released new guidelines for the micro-easing restrictions that will apply from July 13th, including on-site dining and reopening of various venues such as sports centers and cinemas. Yet the majority of major city governments rejected the idea of on-site dining. Among the new guidelines, details of the most controversial on-site dining include seating arrangements that must comply with social distancing regulations, Customers are required to wear masks except when they're eating at restaurants, food courts in department stores and malls, and traditional markets and night markets. But no eating or drinking allowed on trains. Movie fans will be pleased to know that the cinemas will be finally open to the public again. However, there is a 100-person capacity limit restriction, so best make your reservation in advance. As for sports facilities, Besides the public swimming pool, most places will reopen with social distancing and mask wearing protocols still in effect. Showers at these facilities will remain closed and rental of personal gear will not be permitted. However, the World Health Organization called on governments to be cautious in lifting measures aimed at combating the pandemic. Since the global death toll from the coronavirus had reached 4 million, sharp spikes are still occurring in some countries because of highly transmissible variants and because there is a shocking inequity in access to vaccines. WHO crisis manager Mike Ryan said right now is a moment for extreme caution. The UK has recorded more than 30,000 daily coronavirus infections for the first time since January. Health Secretary Sajid Javid says cases could hit a daily high of 100,000 this summer, a level of infection that has not been seen in previous waves of the pandemic. On to some good news. According to the medical report Honghai Precision Industry Co. and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co. TSMC, announced on July 12 that both companies will each donate 5 million doses of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines to the government. In a statement, TSMC said it will spend up to 175 million US dollars for the vaccine purchases, and the spending will include cold chain management for vaccine storage, distribution, and other services. In another statement, Honhai said it will spend up to 105 million US dollars, and its Yungling Charity Foundation will spend up to 70 million US dollars on the vaccine deal. On the other hand, Tzu G Foundation said July 9th it has signed an agreement with the government to represent Taiwan in negotiations to purchase up to 5 million doses of the Pfizer Biotech COVID-19 vaccine from Germany, then donate them to the government upon delivery to Taiwan. And in sports, Taiwan's very own Xie Su Wei and her Belgian partner Elise Mertens won the women's double title at Wimbledon on July 10th. Defeating their Russian opponents, Veronika Kudemetov and Alina 
Vasanina with a turnaround reversal victory. The duo lost the first set, scored 3-6 but saved two match points in the second set and won the third with 7-5, 9-7 respectively. The victory is Shea's third Wimbledon doubles trophy and fourth Grand Slam trophy. The 35-year-old won Wimbledon in 2019 and 2013, partnered with Barbora Strykova of the Czech Republic and China's Peng Shuai, respectively, and she also won the French Open partner with Peng in 2014. Her win at Wimbledon on July 10 marked the first time she has defended a championship title as the tournament was cancelled in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on Fun Day News. Let's make every day a fun day. I'm Wade Lee, your host, and I'll see you next time.